Good evening. My name is Simon. I'm a student of the occult sciences, especially of the Victorian era. And tonight, we will be looking for psychical phenomenon here at Willard Library. For tonight's, for tonight's experiments, we're going to use a variety of tools, but in particular, we'll be using um, the perspective of Alan Kardec, spiritist. Alan Kardec is different than a spiritualist. He is a founding personage of spiritism, which is more of a moral code than it is religion. It's a scientific pursuit of the study of mediumship. He wrote a large body of literature through experimentation in the Victorian period known as codification in five volumes, and this is one of the volumes, that of a medium. A medium is an intermediary between this mundane corporeal world and that of the other side, summer land, the other realm, the place where we pass after death. And not everyone may realize this, but certain mediums attract certain spirits. A medium may attract a particular spirit that becomes comfortable with them. Some attract a variety of lesser spirits, some a few higher plane spirits. It varies quite a bit. So when a medium is present during your spiritist experiments, then there are usually things that will occur. And according to the Kardec spiritist perspective, there are always spirits present. Now we happen to be in a place where there's a known portal as well as a ghost. Now the ghost and a spirit are two different concepts. There's a spirit which is more of a sentient consciousness and a ghost is more like a replaying scene from history where something particularly upsetting or powerfully charged with emotion may have happened. So for the tools, we'll be using a variety of things tonight. The first I'll talk about is the tarot or the book of Thoth. It's such an ancient thing that the origins are speculated about where these may have come from. Um, the most interesting esoteric legend I prefer is when the legendary library of Alexandria burnt in Egypt. Then the Magi from all across that whole area, they gathered in Fez, now known as Morocco, and they all spoke different languages, so they needed a way to communicate. So they created a symbol book of common esoteric mystical symbols for which they all understood and could use to communicate in this book. And the book was hidden as a card game. So we'll be using the tarot to take a snapshot of the spiritist contextual uh, energies of the room tonight. Along with that, there is also the dowsing rods. The dowsing rods, I was taught by my grandfather who was taught by his father before him, originally to witch a well. And so my grandfather taught me in his backyard when the well went dry and found the new well and called the professional well digger. I was probably about nine and the well digger showed up and he pulled out a fork dowsing rod stick and did the same thing and found the same spot. And they dug the well, got photographs in an old album at home, and it's still pumping water to this day. Now these go back to maybe the 15th century, probably before, but documented the 15th century in Germany, which my grandfather was German descent, and they used it to find precious metals. And then later, just a variety of things, treasure and uh, criminals, etc. For our purposes, we'll be looking for EMF or electromagnetic field intersections, which indicate the presence of spirits. 
Similar to dowsing, of course, is the pendulum. As a youngster, my aunt taught me to use the pendulum. It's a way of communicating yes or no with spirits. And then my cousin showed me a way to hold it over the wrist of a pregnant lady to see if it's going to be a boy and it would go side to side or a girl. She said it would spin in a circle. So that would be fun to try. The next time you run into a lady who's pregnant. And of course the EMF meter. So these are all Victorian period tools. The EMF meter is not. I did make this meter custom such that it will only trigger in two to seven milligauss. That is when there's a spirit uh, EMF reading present that ghost hunters claim is indicative of uh, a ghost apparition. So watch for this light in the background. If it goes off, then that would be an interesting, don't know, no guarantees really in anything tonight. So any questions before we begin? We've got our participants here. So let's begin with taking an energy reading of the room. So we need our historian and our psychical atmosphere sensing person. If you could come up and, and help me with these. What I'll do, oh, what I'll do first is we want to confine this reading to the spirits. So this will let the spirits know by laying out this card that this is what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. yeah. The death card. Everybody hopes to get the death card when taking a tarot reading. <laughs> yeah, okay. So like a snapshot, a shutter. You, you just take a quick shuffle and it captures the movement of the room. And we'll do a basic three card read. I will interpret and tell you what the cards mean and then from each of your perspectives as we go and it may it'll probably get deeper as the cards come over you can assist me with this. Each card reader reads these different these cards respond to the way I read them. Huh. All right. The Six of Cups. The Cups are emotions and relationships. And you see there's a couple of children. So this card usually indicates the past. Remember, a child the far past, the distance, a time of happiness, plentiful, good relationships. So the spirit context of what's happening tonight, spirit or ghost, begins with that. This is an interesting card, the seven of pentacles. So the pentacles, I interpret those to mean money, uh, business, uh, power, treasure, wealth. And so there's a man, he's holding the tool that he made it with. So this indicates like a, a prosperous business. But it also, this is what's interesting about this card, is it can also indicate conflict. It's like a conflict, see, because he has the tool. So there could be arguments and upset. One card line. Any any context or anything going on? Yeah. yeah. What what's going on? <laughs> history. His, let's start with history. <laughs> well, we we do not know who the gray lady is, but a uh, common theory is that she is Louise Carpenter, who is the daughter of. Willard Carpenter, the founder of the library. Oh, yeah, Willard yeah, Library. So the children thing kind of comes in there to play there. And then um, a lot of people believe that she is haunting the library because when Willard Carpenter passed, 
he left a lot majority of his wealth here to the building and not so much to his family members so ah. the wealth and conflict thing kind of played there oh, is that, that kind of what you were thinking as well yeah i was thinking the conflict also with uh children there has been rumors that there is a little boy spirit that hangs out in the oh really i did not know billy yep i never heard much about it. I actually, our director's one who told me about him, so. Huh, okay. So that's what popped into my head when it when children came mm -hmm. up. Or the children's department, also yep. down where the gray lady has, was first seen. Sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, let's see what the last card is. What do you think? Or should we just bury in the deck? Ah, <laughs> uh, betrayal. So the swords. They have to do with power and change. When uh, the state of change, things are changing, mm -hmm. a powerful change, and of course the heart. There's a storm. You see the heart's in a storm. There was a storm. And, and a person in power and change, there was a betrayal of the heart. Yeah. Does it? Mm -hmm. Okay. The tarot. So the psychic goal snapshot atmosphere of tonight would be that, that it must, the old term is shining, it must just shine that, that event. Ah, spirits, we invite you to speak and tell us this evening about these two people. Who wants to go first? You want to do it first? All right. Let's like to see what's on the bottom. Oh, the lovers. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So here's how it works. You know how to use the pendulum. Go ahead and hold it up. And then not trying to make it move on your own, just allowing it to begin to swing towards one of these four cards. It'll begin to swing on its own. And when it does, simply allow it. And then when it begins, it generally is more and more. I've seen it swing so much it almost flips over the rest. It looks like it's definitely that card. I wonder what it is. Let's see. Ah, justice. So this would indicate a person, or even this evening, something to do with, uh, so this is adjustment, uh, really, really a fairness and scales. Yet in her other hand, there is the, uh, the power of change. So really something about change and a sense of justice. And I see your eyebrows are way up in the air. What's <laughs> going on? Is that speaking to you yet? No. Okay, it's your life. I'm just yeah, interpreting I'm the card. Hard, I don't know. <laughs> if I threw that lover's card on there, it wouldn't mean anything on it. So we'll leave that there and see if something tonight reveals okay. itself. All right, Erica. Are you ready to douse the pendulum? See whether it's the spirits. Some say spirits drive, drive this. Others say it is the subconscious connected to the Catholic records. Connection to the universal mind. Ah, it's starting. Is it circling? Yeah. Okay, just keep it up. It may want to reset with that card. Now, go ahead and hold her down there closer to the table. There you go, right over the face. Now it's deciding. Yeah, 
Once it starts swinging, just let it go. You can feel the energy move on it, almost without even thinking about it. Oh, it is the new card. Huh. How are you feeling about that? It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> it's a little bit weird, yeah. Isn't that weird? It's like somebody else is moving it, isn't it? Sometimes you can even feel a tug real hard and sudden. Sometimes when you do this, you can even feel like a tingling on your neck or a change in the temperature of the air. Let's see what it is. Did I take the devil card out? <laughs> <laughs> ah, the hanged man. This represents wisdom. This represents wisdom. And in context, huh, in context, this is usually drawn as a single card by a person who is successful in most things they do, well-liked, which inspires people to want to follow them, but it's also a person that it hasn't always been like that. I get a sense that with you, that there was a time that there was a dark cloud, but you overcame that. And that is where the wisdom came from, through the pain of overcoming. Yeah. All right. Now you ready to do the dowsing rods? Sure. All right, all right. There you go. So this was the first time you had a pendulum in your hand. What, what was your, how, what, what was your? It was, it was cool. I wasn't expecting it to do anything. Like, yeah. And I was trying to hold as still as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wait till the table starts talking. <laughs> yeah. How about you? What did you experience? You, you, you're, you're, very sen you're a sensitive oh. empath. relax because I'm still a little high strung, but I usually feel it in my, in my knuckles to my fingers. Oh. And it will push from there. Okay. All right. All right. Excellent. Good. Okay. So, Miss Stacy, the other night, let's see what these... Do you want me back to the EMF detector? What do you think? I don't know. We have left with it. Here you go. Let's just see what happens. Let me get the table out of your way. Let's see what that thing indicates, if anything. Spirits, give us a sign that you're here tonight. Can you show us where one of you most powerful is in the room? Are you willing to talk? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Hi. I told you they. There's one that hangs around her that triggers that thing. So it's moving. Are you moving? I'm not moving. The spirit's moving. It's indicating, it's telling us something. Is it, po is it pointing at Erica? It is. Yes. Are you pointing at Erica? Are you telling her something? You got him. You got him up there level. Hold him right by your heart. Maybe it needs a little more energy in there. Ooh. Oh yeah, there it goes. There it goes. Okay. Okay. Were you trying to tell us something about someone in this room?
Are you willing to talk to the spirit of the talking table? Don't be silent. No. It's hard to interpret. Anybody have any yes or no questions? We may need to move to the table. Do we need to move to the table? Cross for yes, separate for no. Do we need to move to the table? The tipping table. table looks like it ah oh, the table all right the table it is So the tipping table, known in Victorian times as the talking table, the place where it became the fa quite the fashionable thing to do among society during the past time, was all gather around and hold a table and then communicate, and these were called table tipping seances, the original Victorian period seance. So, Stacy, Erica, Joe, if you wanna come up here, and just circle yourself around there. And what you'll do is you'll lay your hands on it, light it through your fingertips and the bit of the palm of your, or the heel of your hand lay really lightly, just very light. And you don't want to consciously move it because that wouldn't give us anything real. So just allowing it and, and Usually people who are stronger of mind have better results. People with strong minds have better results. Whether it's the power of the spirits that move it or the subconscious, which is said to be connected with the universal mind and has access to all knowledge, moves it. So just concentrate on it moving. Not moving it on your own. It could be rocking side to side. It could become circling. It could even rise in the air to just think. And as it begins to move, you can let your hands move with it. Once you feel it move, support and move with it. So just think and imagine it begins to move without consciously controlling it. I already see the movement beginning. The movement pick, it can pick up to be faster and faster. There. There it is. That's good table spirit. Table spirit, give us a good move. It was good rocking. Yes. Give us a movement for your yes, if you want to. What would you like to be yes? Would you like to be no? No is still. Okay. Yep. Lightly holding your hands to rest and support the movement. Spirit. Are you 
how old were you when you passed away? Were you 10 years old or less? Oh, they were a young one. We've got a young one here. Table spirit, can you tell us if this one that's passed on was a male? It was a male, a little boy. Table, can you tell us if the spirit in the room is one that is in the basement children library? Oh, it is. This is the one that, that Stacy heard Greg talk about. Oh, you are. Yes. You've been wanting to be heard for a long time, haven't you? Would you like someone to leave some toys downstairs for you to play with? I got that sense. You would. Of course you would. What little boy wouldn't want toys? Does anybody have any yes or no questions you'd like to ask? Are there any other spirits in the room with you, little one? There are. Are there any that died over... Oh, let's, let's ask a uh, little table spirit. Do you know how long ago it was when you passed away, when you died and crossed to the other side? Yeah. How old is this library? Okay. Did you die over a hundred years ago? You did. Were you somehow related to uh, the builder of this library, Mr. Willard? I think you said. Huh. Okay. Ah, uh, some of the lesser spirits like to just do stuff like this. Do you want, you're just playing with everybody, aren't you? Oh, he is, he's a little boy, he just wants to play and be heard. Well, Billy, let's see, how, how much can you, you move the table? No? Ah. Defiant little guy, and he doesn't like to be told what to do. <laughs> Eric, any historical questions? Ooh, there he goes. book thrower. <laughs> it's either that or the gray lady. Again, it just feels like it's the, I like to move the table. Do you like to run up and down the stairs? Oh, that was a big yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, look, it's turning. 
What's that? It's turning, yeah. The table's turn. Yeah, just turn with it. The library before you pass through. Oh. Did you like to play up the stairs then? He did. I've heard children used to use the stairs as a slide. I didn't realize I had such a playful little spirit way in the library. Very nice. I wonder what would happen if we went to the stairs. You wanna would you like us to go to the stairwell? No? You want them to stay in here with you for a little bit? You do. Okay, I got to for a minute. Okay. You okay? Yeah, I'm overwhelmed. All right, all right. Let's get some reactions. Erica, what do you think? How was, what, what, were, what was going on? I saw that. So moving. And mm -hmm. kind of watching their hands, and it didn't look like anyone was holding it or rocking it or anything like that. Yeah, it was pretty wild. Yep. I've seen it where each, where everybody raises their hands. You can see them. It's a common thing to do. It's like, is somebody really moving in this? And then you raise your hand and it keeps going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, let's close out this. Thank you, Table Spirit, for speaking tonight. We bid you farewell for the evening.